What you're about to see is a real-life story. Taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game. The carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. Tonight I'm going to tell you a story that's a little different from the ones you've been seeing. It exposes a racket just as the others have done. And it's a nasty racket that takes hard-earned money from honest people and puts it into the pockets of thieves. But still, it's a different story. First, because it's a Christmas story. And second, because it put me on a spot I never want to be put on again. I had to arrest Santa Claus. Now, the story begins a few days before Christmas, over in the tenement district, where an old man named Charles Dooley lived alone with his dog but he hardly ever wanted for human company. Hi! 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 children. Want to play, Mr. Dooley? Well, of course. I always want to play. Let's play Johnny on the Pony. Okay. Okay, we play that. Wait. Wait a minute. What's Johnny on the Pony? You get down on the floor and we all jump on you. Yeah! 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 No, sir. That's another name for razzle-dazzle. You don't catch me in that again. What's the matter, Mr. Dooley? Can't you take it? What do you mean? Your Uncle Dooley's strong as an ox. Feel that muscle there. Huh? Mush. I'm Mush. 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 And you know, I've got a special story. I've been saving it just for you. A visit from St. Nicholas. How's that? Ah, uh, it sounds like a lot of bunk to me. Oh, Grover, I'm ashamed of you. Now, come on, kids. Sit down here and all be quiet. That's right. And, Monster, this is for you, too. You sit there and be quiet like the rest of them. All right. Here we go. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in the hope that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. St. Nicholas? Who's he? Why, well, St. Nicholas is that Santa Claus who brings presents to good children every year. Yeah, us kids never get Christmas presents. Oh, of course you do. You uh, Didn't you get anything last year? Sure. My mom had my shoes resold. <laughs> I got vitamin pills. See what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, well, uh, maybe that was because you didn't write to him. You have to write to him? Well, of course you do. How else would he know what you wanted? Now he tells us. I don't know how to write, Uncle Dooley. Would you write for me? Well, of course I would, Princess. I'd... Me too. Me, 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 me too. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, children. It, it, it's, it's pretty late to write to Santa Claus this year, you see, because he lives clear up at the North Pole, and that's an awful long, long way away. What's the matter with their mail? Uh... No, there's nothing the matter with the airmail. Um, all right. Maybe there really is a Santa Claus now. Well, of course there's a Santa Claus. Then we'll get everything we ask for. Oh, now, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. That depends. That, de that depends on how good you are, and, and it depends on how busy Santa Claus is, and, uh, well, that depends on a lot of things. But uh, I guarantee you this. You all will get some presents. Now, come on, tell me one at a time, what would you like? What? Electric train, boxing gloves, coaster, watch. Oh, good evening, Miss Scarpita. Won't you, won't you come in and sit down, please? Oh, no, thank you. I'll be just a minute. Mr. Dooley, the other parents, they sent me to see you about... Well, about telling the children that they're going to get Christmas presents. 
I know you mean well, Mr. Dooley, but it's a terrible problem for us. Of course it is, and me and my big mouth. And it's only because they didn't get any presents last year. And Oh, they get few little things, things they can wear. That's all the families can afford. But now, now they expect very expensive presents. We don't know what to do about it. Well, look, I'll I'll talk to him again, and I'll I'll no wait a minute. I'll I'll figure something out because honest, I'd I'd rather lose my right arm and see those kids disappointed. Oh, don't be too upset, Mr. Dooley. Children forget their disappointments quickly, and they bounce back much quicker than grown-ups do, eh? Yeah, of course, Christmas is time for joy, not for disappointment. Well, I gotta go now. It's way past Anna Maria's bedtime. Oh, Anna Maria said to say good night. Oh, she's my little sweetheart. You say good night for me. I will. <laughs> good night, Mr. Dooley, eh? Good night. Hey, monster. Monster. I've got it. I've got it. Mm. Lumbago or no lumbago, I'm going to get a job the next few days and earn the money. That's what I'll do. Here we are. Help wanted mail. Dishwasher. Now, oh, I can do that. A dish... No. It has to be under 50. Here. Here's something. Elderly men. Elderly men. You can earn extra money for Christmas. Easy work. Apply at once to the Yule Tide Agency, 409 East 23rd Street. Oh, excuse me. Did, did you advertise in the paper for... Oh, yes. Uh, step right in. Uh, Mr... Uh, Dooley. Charles Evans Dooley. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dooley? I'm Mr. Smith, and this is my partner, Mr. Jones. How do you do, Mr. Hello, Dooley? Mr. Jones, I'm happy to uh, sit down. Thank you very much. I, uh, well, I, I certainly would be interested in some of that extra Christmas money that you well, mentioned uh, in the ad. I think we might be able to do something for you there. What do you say, Elmer? Well, I think he'll do dressed up. Y sure. uh, dressed up? What would I have to do? Well, uh, you know these uh, Santa Claus as you see on the streets during Christmas time, you know, the ones with the big pots. Yeah, oh, well, now, you shouldn't make fun of a man because he's a little fat because <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, he, he means uh, an iron kettle to collect money for charity. Oh! Oh, I didn't... <laughs> well, you see, we supply these Santa Clauses for the various charities around town. Oh, oh well, you, you mean I'd be the jolly little fat man with the bell? Oh, now, look, watch. <laughs> Jingle, jingle, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> what do you say, Elmer? Well, I think you'll be all right, Ross. <sighs> oh, how much money would I earn, sir? Well, the usual salary, $10 a day. $10 a day? Oh, that's wonderful. I, I didn't expect to earn that much. And a bonus, if your daily collections are good. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll have the money rolling in, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, oh, gee, it sure be good going home every night with some money in my pocket. Well, uh, not every night, Mr. Dooley. You see, these charities you and uh, our other Santa Clauses work for, why, they uh, pay when your work is finished, on Christmas Eve. Oh, and Chris oh, that's all right. That's all right. As long as I have time to do some important shopping before the stores close. Just be here Christmas Eve, 7 o'clock sharp, with your Santa Claus suit and kettle. You'll get your money. Yeah, 7 o'clock with this suit and the kettle. <laughs> I'll be here ringing my bell. <laughs> hey, get him a suit, Albert. Now, uh, Mr. Dooley, just for our records here, I'd, uh, I'd like to have your address, please. Oh, yes. 214 East Bronson. Yeah, I think you ought to fit into this, all right? Oh, I'll fit into that, all right. You see. Look, I can... <laughs> Merry Christmas! Oh, 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 Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Something for the deserving children. Thank you and bless you. Merry Christmas! Jingle bells! <laughs> Society for the deserving poor children, eh? That's correct, sir. Merry... Who put you out here? Boy, I belong out here. I'm Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho. I'm very serious about this. Who are you working for? Why, I work for all the deserving children in the world. You know, Christmas is made for children, sir. You won't regret what you've given. Thank you very much, and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Well, what do you think of that, monster? A doubting Thomas. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas. Give something, gentlemen, would you like to give something to the dessert? 
Oh, hello, Mr. Smith. Uh, how, how am I doing, huh? Pretty good? Mr. Dooley, you're going to have to work a lot harder if you want to get that extra bonus. Oh. Now, you're falling way behind all the rest of our other Santa Clauses. I am. You've got to snap out of it, you know, show some enthusiasm. Oh. You know, keep ringing that bell. That's yeah. what brings the money in. Well, I, I will. I, I've been ringing it. All right, here, open well. it up. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll do better tomorrow. I, I promise you I will. I'll, I'll, I'll be the top Santa Claus. You see if I'm not. All right, you better be. I want you to be. I want you to get a nice, big, fat bonus. Come on, open it. All right, sir. There you are. I thought that was pretty good, but I'll keep ringing. I tried to find out something about the charity this bogus Santa Claus was working for. And he gave me nothing but that ho, ho, ho business. I'm Santa Claus, like I was a child. I'd say that he was senile, except for the fact that he seemed smart enough to work a vicious racket. And you're sure there's no such charity as the Society for Deserving Children? Captain Braddock, as chairman of the Conference of Organized Charities in this city, I'm positive there is no such society. Then it's a racket, no doubt about that. You've got to get that old man off the street, Captain. Yes, but whoever put that old man there may be doing this thing on a large scale with a whole slew of old men out on the streets. Now, that's an angle worth considering. It's vicious, giving legitimate charities a black eye. I never dreamed such a thing could happen. It's the first time I've heard of it too, Mr. Hastings, and I've heard of a lot of contemptible rackets. Excuse me. Steve? Yes? Get me six men on plainclothes detail for tomorrow morning first thing. Yes, sir. Thanks. You'll be doing the legitimate charities a great favor, Captain Braddock. I know, and I'm going on this thing myself, Mr. Hastings, to supervise it personally. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Your last day to give something to the deserving children. Jingle bells, last day, folks. Remember the deserving children. Jingle bells, everyone. Merry hello, hello, Mr. Smith. Oh, look here. You're going to be proud of me today. But I, I couldn't have done it without the monster here. <laughs> Open it up. Yeah. Open it up. Yeah. All right, there we go. I guess I'll get my bonus all right, huh? Yeah, come on. Hurry up. There we are. There we are. There. There we are. We, we will get the bonus, won't we? Sure. Uh, listen. Uh... Lock it up and bring the whole thing up to the office right away. Lock it up and bring up to your office right away. Oh, all right. I will. What are you thinking? We're going to get our bonus. We're going to get... Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. across the street. Let's take a ride downtown. What for? Look, mister, don't play innocent. I am innocent. I'm just an honest businessman on his way home from work. I think you got the wrong party. What's in that briefcase? Open it up. What? Not a thing. I'm telling you, you got the wrong party. Then you can sue us and the city, too. What do you want? Clean up the office later. Come back later, will you? Don't get sold, Mr. Castle. Anything wrong? Go on, will you? Is business bad? No. What kind of business you fellas in? We build fires for people to throw logs on. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Your name, Castle? What is it? Police officer. Well, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, visiting here, officer. You see, uh... That's Castle, all right. I know there's something crooked about this business. You better hold him. Padlock. What do you keep in the drawer? Like I said, this is my office. That man's lying. Open it. You want me to make you open it? Pull it out. All the way. Sweet charity. All right, take it out and carry it. It's too heavy. 
For a big, strong boy like you? Oh, for shame. Down, Rover. Now on the double. Your partner's getting lonesome. Oh, phew. I never walked so far in all my life. Oh, my. Come on, monster, sit down. Either the two gentlemen in? Nope. Well, that's funny. They, they should be. They should be in jail, and that's where they are. Jail? What for? Well, the way I figured it out, those two was running a phony Santa Claus racket, keeping the money still turning it over to charity. Oh, no. No. You don't, you don't mean that, do you? Yes, sir. But, but, but that money I collected was for charity. It, it was for the deserving children. Merry Christmas to all the deserving children. But... All oh, the crooks. The dirty crooks. I'll bet you they never even expected to pay me a penny either, let alone a bonus. Oh, but my money. I, I've got to get my money to, to buy presents for the kids. What am, what am I going to do about the kids? Don't look at me. I've got my own kids to worry about. But I... Why not? Why not? What are you going to do now? This money was collected for deserving children, wasn't it? Well, the kids that I'm buying presents for are deserving children. They're the gosh darnest deserving kids in this town. Right. And I'm going to get to them before the stores are closed. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. You bet you my kids are as deserving as any. Here, you've got some deserving kids, too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. And, Monster, it's going to be a Merry Christmas. I'll tell you that. Now, you say in this confession that you picked up the money from the kettles every night. What happened to the money you took in today? I left mine in that drawer. I mean you, Pennington. One of the old men's got it, uh, Mr. Dooley. I dumped the whole day's take into his kettle and told him to take it right up to the office. Steve, has Joe come in yet? He's on his way in, sir. Good. Chief, there's no sign of old man Dooley up at that office. But get this. I saw the janitor, and he told me that the old man made off of the dough. How do you like that? I don't. We'd better pick him up, too, Joe. Uh, you said you had the names and addresses of all the old men who work for you. Where does Dooley live? Here's something your boys missed. Oh, here it is. 214 East Bronson. Now, everybody be quiet, eh? Santa Claus has taken all the presents to Mr. Dooley's room. And as soon as we hear the bell, it means that he has come. Oh, there it is now. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hello, children. Merry Christmas. Presents for everyone. Come on, darling. Presents for everyone. Where's my Uncle Dooley? Oh, your Uncle Dooley, darling. He's up on the roof. He's holding my reindeer for me. But he'll be right back. That's Gee, then you're really Santa Claus? Well, of course I'm Santa Claus in the all-too-corpulent flesh. Ho, 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 ho. But don't you want to hear about your presents? Yeah. Well, I I've got a list somewhere. If I can only find that list, I... That's it. That's my list. Now, let me read this out. Uh-huh. Excuse me, is that Mr. Charles Dooley? Yes. Isn't he wonderful? Now, let me see. An, oh, this I remember. Anna Marie, you wanted a little dolly, didn't you, in a carriage? Well, here you are, darling, all for you. Go on, take it away. <laughs> and now, Grover? Daddy, I, how do you know our names? I know all the names of good little boys and girls. Besides, I got this list airmail, remember? Now, here, here's a watch for you, Grover. Uh, and Madeline, that's your sled, dear. Go on, take it away. <laughs> Teddy, here, here's your train. It's not electrical. I thought that might be dangerous, but you can push that around. And here, Ronnie, there are your boxing gloves. And you, Joni, you wanted to dolly in a carriage, too. Well, there it is, darling. It's all yours. Take it away. <laughs> and now, there are presents for the parents under the tree. Well, Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Welcome to the party. We talk to you outside. Oh, sure. What? Police officer. Oh, we'll have to take you in, Charlie. I'm sorry, but... Oh, that's all right. I I know I spent money that wasn't mine. 
But I heard that those men that I was working for... You can for... tell all that to the magistrate, Charlie. Well, I, oh, I'm, I'm coming along with you, but if I could just have one minute, just just one minute, I've got a last present to hand out, and it, it's an There's awful... a charge against you, Charlie. We haven't got time to wait. No. For... All right, go ahead. We'll wait. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, folks, uh, could, could I have your attention just a minute, uh, children, too, please? I, uh, there is one last present I've got here, and to me it's the most important because because it's for my little Anna Marie. And she's always been, and I, I think you know the reason why, always been the closest to my heart. Uh, Miss Scarpita, in, in this envelope you'll... You'll find some money, at least enough to start a fund to get a good doctor and make her legs well. God bless you. And I, I hope they'll do the trick, little sweetheart. And I know it will, because, because you deserve so much to be well. Oh, thank you, Santa Claus. You're a real sweet man, just like my Uncle Dooley. Thank you, darling. Well... Santa Claus has got to be getting on now. And incidentally, I, I'm i going to take your Uncle Dooley with me for just a little while up to the North Pole. Uh, not for very long. I, I just want him to help me get my, my toy shop started, that's all. I'll send him back to you very soon. Uh, how about a Christmas carol? But I want you to know something first. I didn't steal all of that money. Some of it was mine for work honestly done. Look, Charlie, you stole some money, and the law says... Wait a minute, Joe. I think you've got the facts a little twisted in this case. Mr. Dooley didn't steal any money. Chief, are you well, all right? The money he used for the presents was collected for deserving children, wasn't it? To make Christmas happy for them? Well, sure, but... Well, it seems to me that Mr. Dooley made Christmas happy for some very deserving children. Don't you think so, Joe? I make it a point never to argue with the boss. Here. I want you to add this to the fund for Anna Marie. With best wishes from... from a friend. Will you do that? Yeah, I'll do that. You're a good friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce you to this very nice officer. Mr. Dooley, this is Joe Seidel, and he wants to contribute to Anna Marie's fund, too. Huh? Don't you, Joe? Oh, well, sure. Of course, Chief. I said I'd make it a point never to argue with the boss. I hope she gets well real fast. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Chief. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Dooley. Merry Christmas. And a wonderful... Well, that's I managed to avoid arresting Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. I figured I'd fulfilled the letter as well as the spirit of the law when I took in Ross Pennington and Elmer Castle. They'll be on the receiving end of a different kind of charity for a while. The state will furnish their board and lodging with a little hard labor thrown in just to remind them that they couldn't get away with their new kind of racket. A racket that was more than just against the law. It was a parasite that fed on one of the finest charities we know, the street corner Santa Claus. I'm sure there aren't any other crooks as low as Pennington and Castle. So during the Christmas season, give freely to the men in the red suits. They're all working hard for legitimate charities. Closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. See Racket Squad next week, same time, same station.
names and places in tonight's story have been changed for obvious reasons. And any resemblance to other people and places is purely coincidental. Our story is presented to expose the confidence game and is never intended to reflect in any way upon honest, legitimate businessmen.